<laughs> and I've got a great story, a new new paranormal encounter that's been taking place that we've been taking stories on. I was waiting to share with Donna because it has to deal with kids. Oh, and you know, she thinks that they're the conduit to, uh, yeah, the yeah. afterlife. And, and, she doesn't and, show up. I'm going to her garage sale after this. I'll bring her an MP3. <laughs> Excellent. Can you buy me, like, one of her old T-shirts or something? Did you see, uh -oh. if, see what's on it? Yeah, we're going to hang it up on the wall. We do curse it. No. <laughs> No, I'd love to, uh, yeah, if, but hopefully I'm sure she's listening, because she loves ghost stories about kids, right? Oh, I, I guarantee you she was listening up until this uh, point. She switched she it up. freaked out by it. So tell us about, I mean, if, uh, before we get into that, too, I should mm -hmm. say, when we talk about kids, my kid just thinks you're the, he, you're a hero to him, and he's never met you guys. He's just like, is that Darkness Dave guy going to be coming around soon? Mm -hmm. I wanna, he wants to go on a ghost hunt so bad. We should work it out. A lot of the, the people around here, their kids want to go on a ghost hunt. Maybe we should do a... Uh, clear channel kids ghost hunt bring all of your kids and let me manipulate them to, well wait a minute <laughs> manipulate them by taking them on a ghost hunt and see just how creepy i can get uh, get it going for the kids right right bring your kids to the haunted place right yeah that's always a good day at work although it's never good to watch like their you know your parents break down and run out of a room <laughs> the kids are usually not as freaked out as the adults are so probably not because they, they they've seen this more often i think they're a little bit more open to it you know they're not at the point where they're uh they're known, you know, you're not told to be afraid of ghosts until parents start telling you, you know, that, right. oh, yeah, ghosts, and you start watching the Hollywood movies. I grew up on Casper. If I would have seen anything, it didn't spook me. I just wanted to be his friend. Right. And this is why you're doing what you're exactly. doing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I just need friends. you got the new show coming up, Paranormal Normal Challenge. That's going to be debuting tonight on the Travel Channel, 8 o'clock. You don't want to miss that. Darkness Dave is hanging out with us here in the studio. And you were telling us, off, uh, I, when I was talking to you, for, prior to coming to this, you know, I got this new thing, man, and it is creepy, and a new phenomenon that's going on. Yeah, actually, we've only been able to track back stories till about 1995. Okay. But there's this phenomenon, and I'd love, if your listeners have had this happen, they can contact me at dave at darknessradio.com, because I'm trying to collect more stories. Uh, it's called the black-eyed kids phenomenon. Oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. And it is just about as creepy as it sounds. Uh, in, it, it almost rings of urban legend type stories. Right. Uh, but there's there's many different accounts, and we've had some from really credible sources. But uh, one of the first I found was the guy and the girl, the quintessential story. They're in the car after a day talking, making out a little bit, and uh, their attention is drawn to the window. There's a rapping in the window, and they look up, and there's three teenagers standing outside their window. Okay. And they're like, can you give us a ride? We need a ride. Now, usually the black-eyed kid phenomena, they'll repeat one or two lines over and over, but that's all they say. And when he looked up, he realized all of their eyes were jet black. Not hollowed out, not missing, black, right? Uh. And they tried to get, when he rolled down the window, he also said that there was this really foul, like, rotting meat odor around them. They're dressed very plainly, very, you know, almost Amish, just very, no adornment, no Nike symbols, nothing. It's just right. white shirts, black pants, you know, they, and they have just this very gaunt, hollow expression. Um, and of course, the couple took off. So we started collecting some of these stories, and a couple of my favorite creepers, are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you already got me on the one. Couple that go on their honeymoon, and it's like Cancun, Bahamas, one of these things, they're at one of those all-inclusive all resorts. Yeah. yeah. They're walking along the beach, which you're supposed to do, right? It's on all the movies. So they're yeah. walking along the beach at sunset, holding hands, and in the in the distance, they see this young girl, looks about 10, 11 years old, in a white gown, waving for them. So they, they start moving their way up there, and she goes, please, come help, please. And they're like, okay, and they're following her along. And they keep following her. She's like, please, please, come help. And she just keeps repeating it. She goes in, and as they get underneath one of the piers, she starts to walk into the water and gets about waist deep and keeps beckoning for them. And the two of them looked at each other and said, oh, hell no, we're not going oh, there. Right? Yeah. And they're like, well, you know, what's wrong? And she's just, please, please, come, please, help me. And they're like, well, we're going to go We're gonna go get help, honey. You wait here. And as she started to approach them, and they could catch the facial features, that's when they realized she had jet black eyes. Oh. So they said, just wait here. They turned around and started moving. They didn't realize how far down the beach they had wandered with this girl. You know, she had taken them pretty far off the beaten path. But the freaky thing for them, aside from the black eyes, was as they're walking back, their footprints are in the sand, and there's no other footprints. Oh, on theirs. no. Man. Yes. And trying to summon them out to the water. Yes, yeah, trying crazy. to get them in. And then we've had more experiences where the people have heard the, the uh, um, you know, voices out in the yard, and they'll look out there, and there's three kids standing on the porch trying to get into the house, which beckons back to kind of, uh, or harkens back kind of like to the vampire lore. They can't come in unless they're invited. Oh. And they only repeat, can we use your phone? We need to use your phone. Please let us in. We need to use your phone. And, and people, you know, of course, we've never gotten the story of what happens when you let them in. Although we did have a weird story from about a week, two weeks ago on our show where I actually was contacted by somebody who had listened to our Black Eyed Kids stories. 
And she said, here's something. You remember about three weeks ago, we were getting all that rain, and it was junky and misty and crappy. Yeah. Out. This is they, in Minnesota? Yes. At about 10 o'clock at night, the, the older couple, they said, we're older, we you know hang out, we listen to the show once in a while, but you, um, she goes, we were uh, sitting around, and we could hear what sounded like kids running around outside, playing around our house. And we're like, it's crazy crappy weather out. What parents is letting their kids out there? Yeah. But every time we looked, we could see nothing. She said, so they didn't think too much about it, just kids that, you know, unruly kids out there screwing around. They go to bed about 3 o'clock in the morning. The wife rolls over, and standing next to her <gasps> bed are three children. Oh, uh-huh. boy. Uh-huh. And she's like, she, she said, I've listened to your show before. I know this paradelia deal or, or this hypnagogic and hypnopompic state when you wake up and kind of at that moment you're still in dream and reality is coming together. Right. She goes, so I'm trying to collect myself and not panic like you said. And I said, that's good, right? She goes, but then... She goes, they didn't go away. I closed my eyes, opened them up. They're standing there. She goes, so I start to lean over to grab my husband, and I open my mouth to scream, and the one in the middle steps forward, oh, puts her finger to her lips and goes, shh, we just want to look at you. Yeah! Oh, my God! Yeah. I cannot even take that. So, Darkness, Dave. Yeah! Yeah. Now, the, the, the one more quick one. Right? Okay. So we're talking to this gentleman. He works at the American Institute of Parapsychology. Yeah. And Dr. Andrew Nichols, and he was telling me, I was asking him about that phenomenon. He said, you know, I haven't heard about that, but he was, I was working a case, uh, a very reputable, reputable source was working it with him on a demonic case. He had never had an out-of-body experience, and that night when he had gotten home, he remembered floating up out of his body. And he said, very conscious, very aware, and he said it was amazing to have this out-of-body experience. And as he's floating up towards the ceiling, he, he rolls around to look at himself and his wife in bed, and he's just fascinated. And as he looks down at himself, the eyes open up on his physical form. No way. They're jet black. As if it can see him, it breaks into this really creepy, menacing smile. And the, and the guy whose spirit is hovering above him, again, very credible source, not a goofball, not a nutbag, very skeptical about the whole paranormal nature of things. Right. And he said he was fighting to get back into his body. When he recovered consciousness, he awoke to find himself with his hands around his wife's throat, and he's choking her. And then he stopped. She started saying, you were talking in a strange voice. I couldn't understand half the words you were saying. And she really got panicked on it. But, you know, that's kind of taking the Black Eyed Kids phenomenon to the next level. Is it a form of possession? Wow. I don't know. But yeah, that's uh, that's one of the stories that have been out there. But if you've had an experience with Black Eyed Kids, let us know about it. Well, there's that, you mentioned that there. And it favors him with the game of the Your mind's all messed up. Well, no, here's the thing is that Amy James has had something like that happen actually just yesterday. And the kid came to sell her magazines. And so she ended up buying, what, 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 what's the magazine you got? What's the subscription? Oh Please buy our magazines. Garden and Gun. No. <laughs> Garden and Gun. <laughs> She's got a subscription to it now really? because of the black eyed kids. Right, right when you said that, they have to, you have to ask me to let in. He said, come on out, step into my office. And I said, no, just come in here. Yeah, you and I totally. Him in. I I got goosebumps immediately when you and obviously nothing weird happened or I didn't see any. But right away I you thought you bought Garden and Gun. What do you mean that's, nothing that's weird happened? <laughs> oh, that's so scary. K one hundred two wake up crew. It's Donna Musk, Amy James, Dave. Can you hang out for one sure. more second? Yeah, That'd be awesome. Darkness Dave is in with.